Hey folks, welcome to the Mike Lopez TV show. I'm your host, AC Mike. We'll bring you all things Atlantic City and our local region, politics, sports, dining, entertainment, and so much more. Our first guest is Alan Valentine, president of Elite Casino Marketing Group. After that, we will revisit our discussion with musician, composer, and music teacher, my friend, Eddie Morgan. So stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. Our first guest is Alan Valentine, president of Elite Casino Marketing Group. Alan, welcome to the show. It's great to see you, Mike. Great to As see always. you. Uh, listen, <laughs> Thanks for having me on. We did this. I want to thank you. You were one of our first guests uh, several years ago when we first started this show yep. uh, with Mr. David Peña. Yes. It's our friend, our mutual friend. Yep. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So, listen, let's get, you know, I know you a little bit. We're getting uh, familiar with each other, especially uh, uh, off screen here. Tell folks a little bit who you are, what you're doing, and what brought you here from Rhode Island. I write, produce, and direct production shows here in Atlantic City and other markets. Um, and uh, I came here in 1990. God, I was 24 years old, I'm aging myself here. And uh, I was a magician back then and got hired at the Trump Taj Mahal the day it opened and was the resident magician. So what that meant was I would work in the gourmet restaurants doing close-up magic, and then I'd work in the uh, production shows at night doing uh, a 10-minute act. And then when my act was over, I'd run and do some VIP parties, and it was a very exciting time. And then uh, some executives at the Trump Organization said, hey, do you want to have your own show at Trump Plaza? And I said, of course. And uh, for two years, I was at Trump Plaza with the magic of Alan Valentine. And then that took off. We started touring. We were at the Tropicana of Atlantic City. We were in Biloxi, Myrtle Beach. We were all over with that show. Um, and during that period of my life, I started producing other shows when I wasn't on stage performing. And then that started really taking off. And I just fell in love with the idea of just taking a bunch of creative people, working together, shaking it up, putting it up on stage, and hearing an audience, you know, hopefully, you know, roar with applause and laughter. And uh, so that's kind of who I am and what I do. So, okay, we'll go back to the musician. Though. Sure. As a kid, or what was it, for family? Yeah. How would that get started? Uh, so I had a tooth pulled. And on the way back from the dentist, I'm feeling just all nerve came out. I'm miserable. I, I think I was like eight, maybe nine years old. And my mother pulls in front of a toy store. And she said, stay in the car. I'll get a surprise. She comes out with a magic set, one of those little like, TV magic sets. That was it. That moment just made my life go this way. And then I started working uh, birthday parties, weddings, sweet 16s in my neighborhood, in my area. And then I grew up on Long Island, so I started working clubs in Manhattan. Right. Uh, the Limelight, the Palladium, uh, the Tunnel, these are all clubs back in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, and uh, an opportunity for the Taj Mahal came up, and I left Long Island, came down here for what originally was a six-month contract. And 33 years later, I'm still here. <laughs> still That's here. amazing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm going to segue a little bit, though. Sure. But when you talk about these buildings, <clears throat> these casinos, uh, Taj Mahal, very near and dear to my oh, heart. Yeah. The plaza, you speak about that. You know, I always say the story with my mom. And we saw your show back in the day wow, at yeah. the plaza. My mom and dad raised eight kids, right? Wow. I never really saw them together. Obviously, they were together. They had eight <laughs> kids. But always working, dropping off, wrestling right. practice, soccer, softball practice for the girls. Last sister gets out of the house, and now we're going to the plaza occasionally. Hey, come join us to, uh, for the buffet or a show and whatnot. And it was just those properties and what yeah. you were bringing at that time. They loved your show. God bless them. <laughs> but it was just reinventing uh, mom and pop again, and I don't mean to get into that, but yeah. it was just one of those places. Uh, talk about the Taj, how it was, and how the uh, plaza was for some of it. It just came boy. down two years ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, when the Taj first opened, it, it was the place on the planet, right? It was the cover of Time magazine. It was super exciting place to be. I mean, Michael Jackson's walking down the hallway one minute, Mike Tyson's over here, and it was just... Uh, it was just a very exciting time. I mean, people dressed up, right? People were in right. suits That's and right. ties, the gourmet restaurants. You had to kind of look a certain way to get in. And it was just, it was a different era in Atlantic City. It was glamorous. Yeah. Um, 
And then, yeah, then to have my own show at uh, Trump Plaza was just a dream come true. And you're I mean, a young guy seeing all this going yeah. on. I mean, yeah, I mean that's kind of It was be, wild. Right. <laughs> it was wild. And that's coming from somebody that was working the club scene in Manhattan. Right. You know, right. Uh, so that was a very exciting time in my life, without yeah. a doubt. It, there's no question about it. I mean, it was a, a special time in Atlantic City. I see a revitalization coming on, but I don't oh, think yeah. uh, it, quite that, you know, when that plaza was moving and grooving and, like oh, you yeah. said, Mike Tyson walking through the building and yep. Bruce Willis and I could yep. go on and on with all these other uh, entertainers in the fights next door when oh, yeah. it was the, the convention center. Yeah. Lots of old heads know it, yeah, and, yeah. which is Boardwalk Hall now. Yeah. So you get your own show. A little different from uh, being a magician. I mean, you're a one-man oh, guy yeah. there. Now you're, 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 you know, you transcend to shows, yes. you know, producing. Yes. How does that, you know, evolve? And you just mentioned it that you're yeah. like, I want to get all these people together, but not an easy task. It, it was not, especially my very first swing at the bat at Trump Plaza was, yeah, it, it was a moment of, did I bite off more than I could chew here by saying yes to this? And uh, I think my team and I rose to the occasion. I think we put on a very special show. And what made that show different was it was a bit of a book show for a magic show. So it was a storyline about a magician who worked for the CIA. He had to rescue the heroine. He had to defeat the villain. It was just, you know, very Indiana Jones, James Bond. Uh, I strapped on a jetpack, flew around the stage, vanished in midair, appeared in the back of the audience. It was just, flashbacks. right, you remember the show? Yeah. So it was, it was something very different. Uh, and uh, the executives were, were very happy with that show opening. And then uh, the following year, and then... Uh, an executive, Dennis Gomes. Did you know oh, yeah. Dennis? Oh, yeah. yeah. I knew Dennis. Great guy. Great, man. wonderful, wonderful man. So many things he did for so many people. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I could just go on a bit. His imprint in Atlantic City, I think, yeah. will, will last forever. And he then spotted me at the plaza and said, hey, you want to come over to Tropicana? I said, sure. And I was there for almost a year. So, um, so yeah, so producing sh my first big show was very exciting and, yeah. and a big task. And some of the, you know, again, you're a young guy, you're putting these shows together with your team, uh, and I've, it's a tour, you know, so you're seeing some of the folks come out, and as the audience continues to grow and roll in, and you're seeing some stars probably in the audience as well, what is that doing for your confidence? Because, uh, you know, we're here at Stockton University, yeah. and this is the way you got started with magic and whatnot, but yep. now you're doing shows, and we'll get into that in the next segment, how many different shows. You know, what, you know when you say something, you said team. Talk yes. about that. I mean, you have to have... I have a wonderful creative team and a wonderful pre-production team. Uh, a lot of people to, to name, but my core group uh, is uh, Linda Vormans, who's creative manager, my production manager. Uh, Jillian Reed is my choreographer. Uh, my wife, Christine, is not only an amazing dancer and performer, but she has become just a brilliant costume designer. I mean, you've seen the shows. Yes. I mean, it's just the one thing people always say when the show's over is, wow, those costumes are gorgeous. Right. You know, and, sh and, and so that's the core team. So we meet and discuss what the next show is going to be, what it's going to look like, what it's going to feel like. Um, and then I start to introduce the rest of the, the other team members. My uh, Arlen Gilliam is my musical director. Gerard Caprell is my musical director. And so we start, you know, building this thing. Go, well, what's the look and feel of it? What's the theme of the show? Uh, and yeah, and just building it. It's, it's fun. And then working with the scenery and yeah. the lighting designers and then... You know, putting just putting it together. But ultimately, yeah. you're you're the decider. Sure, you know, the buck stops with me for sure. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. You're standing in the room, back of the room when it starts, and you're the one. I mean, I'm yes. sure everyone's nervous and whatnot. But yeah. It's probably I'm a the bit most different. nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the most nervous. Yeah. I mean, even for oh, yeah. some at this time in your career, it's, it's still probably the same sort of. Uh, yeah, it's exciting. Right. I mean, uh, stomach going. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and, and there's nothing like the very first day of rehearsal because no matter how many shows I do. I'm thinking, oh God, what are we doing here? You know, right? I mean, the very first right. moment, right. and then it, and then it kicks in. It's like, oh yeah, I've been you know doing this, this for 30 doing. years. We know right. what we're doing, and uh, but yeah, to, to, and also give young talented people a chance. That we hold open call auditions usually in Manhattan. We had one casting call that was like 250 people, singers, dancers that showed up, and we watched them, we listened to them, and you know, right. uh, one after the other, and to give some of that talent a break, uh, and then to see them their career go somewhere. It's been very exciting. That's got to be awesome. Hey, yeah. folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. We'll continue our discussion with Alan Valentine, president of Elite Casino Marketing Group. Be right back. Welcome back. Let's continue our discussion with Alan Valentine, president of Elite Casino Marketing Group. Alan, so, uh, you know, you're out there in uh, New York somewhere doing your thing, and you, you spent some time at the Taj and the Plaza. 
Atlantic City. Tell us about Atlantic City a little bit, the love. I mean, we based the show here. Yeah, I fell in love with it, like you did, and as we were talking during the break, people like Pinky Kravitz, who, you know, my first TV appearance was on Pinky's show, <laughs> and I was so nervous. Uh, and actually, at the time, one of my uh, dancers' assistants was my wife, Christine, at the time. And uh, it, he was so nice to us and so sweet, and, and, you know, as we discussed during the break, Pinky was just such a legend, such a wonderful man. Yeah, so, he just uh, he did really so was. much. That's Mr. So Lake City. City. Yeah. Yeah. So, but he had that love that you have, that I have, that, yeah. that others have for this town. Right. Yeah. And, and so glad that he brought it here oh, yeah. from wherever he was from and we know. And the same thing that with you because you've brought so much um, laughter, so much uh, uh, happiness. You know, people get caught up in life. Oh, yeah. And whether it's music, entertainment or whatever it may be, a walk on a boardwalk and beach. This, what you do, the shows, takes us away for a couple hours. And listen, we go back to reality. This is what I want to talk about now right. in this segment with you. I mean, you have so many shows, but talk to some of the shows that you've recently had, and then we're going to talk about what's going on this summer. I will. And, and to just piggyback what you just said, it's true when people are in our theater and they're having a great time and they're in our world and they're forgetting about whatever's going on in their lives for just that hour, it feels great. It feels really good. It makes it all worth it. Uh, what we have going on this year has been a lot. Uh, we had Dance to the Music at Hard Rock. It was a 60s show that had a wonderful run that was just turned out to be a powerhouse production. Um, and then we have uh, Back to the 80s running now at uh, Borgata, uh, which is just Prince, Madonna, Michael Jackson, and uh, my team and I picking that Picking the songs for that show, probably the hardest thing ever, because the 80s, Gosh, uh, yeah. and not to the 60s, but but being kind of a, a person of, that was my era, right? We're, right. we're right. similar Same in age, era. so yeah. Yeah. so so it was tough. Uh, and to also decide to not use ballads, to just go all up-tempo the whole show, was, uh, but, it, but it paid off. It's a, it's a wonderful show. Uh, and then that closes, and then right after that, we go into rehearsals for our 10-year anniversary of the burlesque show at Borgata. It's our 10th anniversary show. We opened in 2013 uh, and just uh, am stunned. And every year, what I think what makes that show such a staple at Borgata is that every year we do a 100% reboot of the entire production. It's a brand new show every year, which is some effort. Yeah. Uh, and it, uh, it, I think the customers now know that. We bump into customers and say, what are you guys doing next year? They can't wait to see it. Yeah. Then, Before you go yeah. on to that, though, but I have to stop there. Ten years. Ten years. Listen, I mean, I know there's some shows maybe out in Vegas, one out a few. I don't recall shows here on the East Coast, not just Atlantic City, that have run that long. It's very, very rare Yeah, in Atlantic City. Yeah, yeah. it really is. And yeah. so we feel very fortunate, and we, and we realize that the show, and thanks to, you know, Borgata. Borgata has right. been just a wonderful who was the partner. Clever, who was the clever one that, that saw you and, and kept you there? Uh, initially, Joe Lupo. Joe Lupo, okay. Yeah, <laughs> Joe yeah. Lupo right. and Michael Woodside, and uh, wow. gentlemen Paul Merrick, uh, wisely said, because at the time, a burlesque show in Atlantic City seemed like a kind of you know, dicey idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the show is very elegant. It's, it's a, almost more of a folly show with a wonderful right. comedian, Chris Morris, and uh, Variety Acts, and our burlesque girls are, are really renowned burlesque stars around the world. So it's, and I think people sense right away it's an authentic show. Uh, so yeah, once that opens, then we go into uh, rehearsals right away for um, a new variety show called Euphoria at Hard Rock. And uh, that's a pretty wild show. It's going to have five variety acts, singers, dancers, musicians, all working together to create these routines. That's going to be very unique. So we're excited about that. Uh, wow. And then after that, oh, we're very excited. Our show at Resorts uh, opens June 25th. Uh, it's called Disco Inferno. It's a huge disco show. Uh, and very excited about that as well. And especially for Resorts, it's their first time doing a production show in many, many years. So the team there at Resorts is, is excited and doing everything they can to, to get the word out. So yeah, it's, oh, yeah. I can't it's a busy wait to season go to for us. Yeah. So business when you season. talk about that Resorts and some of the theaters, I get caught up in places, you know what yeah. I mean? The history, and yeah. I, I would take it at Superstar Theater at Resorts. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, it's just... Um, Frank Sinatra point. <laughs> I mean, go ahead, yeah. I mean, so, you know. how do you yeah. get that? How do you top that? Variety show. Now let's drop back. That to me sounds like that's something that could be a TV show as well. I mean, has that ever been a you know the thought of yours when you start creating these shows and maybe this could drop in or some you get things, some calls? Yeah, some things for sure. Yeah, we've had a few shows that I think this could be at least a TV special right. for sure. Yeah, right, right. That's yeah. amazing. I, I love it. So Atlantic City again. We're going to come back here. 
What do you see as far as, I mean, we went through a rough time. I mean, when we first oh, yeah. met uh, in person together, it was uh, that COVID time. Do you see, do you feel that, that, that it's ah, oh, lifted yeah. the people are out and breathing oh, yeah. and, and, and we coming up to the shows? Yes. I mean, the one thing that took a huge hit during the pandemic was live entertainment, right? right. Broadway Absolutely. shows, Cirque du Soleil, Bruce Springsteen, anything live took a real hit for a year and a half. And now I think it's like a rubber band. It's bounced back in a way where our theaters are packed. People are just excited to be out, to be sitting in a theater with other people. I mean, it's, uh, it's a very good feeling. It's strong. I, I, like I said, and I'm going to drop back, and I don't mean to bring it back yeah, up. Sure. But I remember that was the first show that I had went to was your show. I think we were sitting six feet, five feet apart for different... Uh, oh, yeah, this is the Motown and, and, show. Was that the yeah, Motown the show? the Motown show. Yeah, which was yeah, a Motor great show, Live. killer oh, yeah. show. Tell us about that show a little wow, bit. Wow, yeah, Motor City has Oof. become a monster production that's played a... a yeah, it's, it really has become something. It started in um, when the Hard Rock first opened. The first show that we launched with was that one. And it just out of the gate. And because people who love Motown are so passionate about that music. And I think, especially for the casino crowd, it hits the right demographics, and it just really has become a very special show. And, and, An enormously talented cast, well, too. Well, that's what I was going to talk like about. insanely talented cast. It. Do you use a lot of the same cast? But now you have multiple S shows, so you still have to go out there for rehearsals. And, yeah, you know, we kind of call it spreading the love around. We, tr we try to give performers who've been working for us sometimes a couple of shows off, bring in some new talent, um, but certainly keep the, the integrity of the people that we, you know, feel are, are right for a certain show. That's the other thing also, is making sure that that person's vocal range is right for the songs that we're picking. So yeah, there's some, uh, right. some involvement that goes into that, yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Listen, Alan, I sit here and I smile and I laugh because I, <laughs> I keep going back to mom getting you a, a, a and, and then just to all this that's going on. Could you imagine if she came out with juggling clubs? <laughs> yeah, what would right, happen to my life? <laughs> right, right. No, it's, just, it's, it's just one of those things. And what I want you to do, we got about a minute or so left. I, and as we sit here at Stockton University, and we have an adult audience as well, but just some some uh, advice, you know, to 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 not just the youth, but to all of us. When you have an idea to do something, whether you're 24 or 58, follow your heart. Mm. You know, it's been said a billion times, right? But it's really true. If you have a passion in life, like you, look what you've done, Mike, in Atlantic City. It's very impressive. And I think that you you followed your heart. And I think that. Finding something that you have a passion for, pursuing it, hopefully making enough of a living at it, uh, eagles up, I think, to a happy life. Um, not everyone's fortunate enough to be able to do that, but if you are able to pursue a goal, if you have that moment in your life where I can either turn left or right, you know, and one of those directions is pursuing my goal, and the other one may be practical, I'm not the most practical person, so take what you will from this advice, but I, I decided to follow my heart. Yeah. And follow my passion. And there it is. So just That's don't it. give up. Follow your That's passion. Right. Go out there. Ask questions. We were speaking Absolutely, about that as yeah. well. Yeah. And uh, you never get anything if you don't ask. That's right? true. Right. So take a swing at the bat. Yeah. Hey, folks, Alan, I want to thank you. It's <laughs> great, Mike. Appreciate you coming out. Uh, yeah. Listen, we're going to have to do this again, and uh, love I'd love to uh, even get you on the radio show. We do a little sure, radio show. absolutely. We cross-pollinate here uh, with the TV and the radio show, so we thank you so much. Folks, uh, Alan Valentine, <laughs> thank him again for being on the show. Stay tuned. <clears throat> we'll be right back, folks. Welcome back to the show. For our next segment, we are going to check out and revisit our previous interview with Eddie Morgan, musician, composer, and music teacher. I hope you enjoy. Our next guest is a good friend, music, composer, musician, music teacher, the one and only Eddie Morgan. Eddie, welcome to the show, my man. Good to see you and good to be here, Mike. Listen, I love it, folks. And if you don't see that smile and make you smile, <laughs> something's wrong with you. Eddie, so listen, what we do here, I know you, and a lot of the folks even here in the studio know you. Mm -hmm. But tell the folks at home a little bit about yourself, raised, and, and your love for music. Well, born and raised in Atlantic City, New Jersey. That's right. I call it Casino City of the East, man. That's right. But for a long time, World's Playground, as I grew up, uh, we, we were able to do a lot of things uh, that are not no longer in Atlantic City, like, you know, bowling alleys and all that kind yeah. of stuff. But music became my, my passion. And uh, when I look at how my life went, I started with band and stuff in school, went to high school, on to college, got a music degree, came out, still wanted to play in bands, so I started my own bands back in like 87, and uh, still going today. 
You definitely are still going today. Before we go into some of your inspirations, tell us some of the bands that you played that, in the type of the music. Was it all R&B well, or good? Yeah, yeah. Way back in the day, it was all funk and R&B bands. We played uh, covers off the radio. We dropped the needle. You know how they used to right. do that. We'd get the horn parts, and we had singers that could and couldn't sing <laughs> like the record. But uh, right. we had a lot of fun. And uh, in fact, uh, Angela Burton, and I went a band together, and uh, Free Spirit LTD was one of my first bands. Wow! And uh, we won a, a Warner Brothers national uh, competition and did a, a demo rec uh, recording in New York City. So that's a little history back back in the day, but Listen. my influences go way back with music in Lang City. And, and that's what we're going to talk about here, though. But, but we have a generation that's missed the, the, the record player and whatnot, though. And that's right. for another show. <laughs> when you come on the radio show, we'll talk more about that. No Eddie, talk to us a little bit about your inspirations for music. I know you hit one or two, though, but there's many more, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the first and foremost is Louis Armstrong, because my sister and I would stay up and watch old movies with Louis and uh, Velma Middleton and Ella Fitzgerald and all these greats that were in these movies, and Louis was singing and playing his trumpet. So when the fourth grade came around, I, I gravitated to want to play the trumpet. And it just was so much fun, and I was able to do it well, so I just continued it. But after, the, after I got into high school and all, many others, Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, mm -hmm. Clifford Brown, you know, Clifford uh, Brown. Freddie Hubbard, I mean, Lee Morgan, Wynton Marsalis, all these guys are like inspiration to me. And uh, I, pro I probably do my style more like Miles in a way, but they all come out sometimes or another. You know, how improvisation is, you hear a lick, you use that lick, you bring that lick back, whatever. But that's, that's what's influenced me. And it's amazing, like you said, you drop those names like that and to be able to, uh, at a young age, to be able to pick that up. I'm sure you were encouraged at home as well to uh, do some of that. Well, yeah, well, well school teachers did right. it. Um, Ken Scrivener was my, one of my first trumpet teachers, on with Mr. Uh, Jan Dr. James Burns. And then on in high school, we had Mr. Burbick, who was our band director, mm -hmm. and a French horn teacher was, was phenomenal, like I said, Mr. Burns. But we went to all kinds of things with band and orchestra and choir, and I sing too, so, love you know, love, love, love singing. That was, that was kind of my first passion, because right. trumpet wasn't first. Right, 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 so it's a <laughs> and then that just gravitated to that. So listen, not put you on the spot, but you brought a little instrument back with you, and you've wrote something, and, and oh, yeah. uh, so why don't you give us a little taste in the folks at home? I just happened to have what? my trumpet with me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, this little ditty I'm going to do uh, is um, called Chuck's Groove. I'm just going to play the first section of it. It's on my first CD with Roy Ayers and the Atlantic Urban Jazz Ensemble, produced by Bill Lark, a good friend of mine. Very nice. sections. I love it. Now listen, <clears throat> let, let, we gave him a little teaser. Tell folks where they can find that. Uh, they, they they have to see me. Right, okay. <laughs> All right, and we're going to talk more about yeah. that. We're going Facebook to be able to page, see. Eddie Morgan, uh, and uh, then I have an uh, Eddie Morgan trio page, yeah. and Eddie Morgan rec for jazz page. So, so Eddie, again, uh, lifelong resident, the music in Atlantic City. We only have a few minutes, there, but talk about some of that, because I'm sure that was some of the inspiration, what you've seen going on around you, besides those awesome names that you mentioned. Well, back in the day, the Club Harlem <clears throat> was, was the main spot uh, on the north side. You know, So it was like Apollo in New York, and my mom used to take us to shows. So I got to know, I got to know the musicians <clears throat> as I was coming through. Johnny Lynch was the lead trumpet player, and right. uh, he... Uh, he influenced me a lot as well, but the Wonder Gardens was a spot to mm. play at, the Jockey Club, uh, and I even got to play at the 500 Club once. Wow. When, when awesome. My sister's uh, junior prom, our band, the Black Essence, played for their prom in the 500 Club. That's amazing. So it was, it was, the town was wide open, 
but totally different than it is now. Right. So we only got a few minutes left. Again, like I just keep saying the same thing. <laughs> but tell us, I mean, and you said it was amazing. Whether it was, uh, you know, on Kentucky. Kentucky Ave or uh, the 500 Club. What was that experience like? I saw the smile, but just tell folks so they can get a sense of that history. You would see lines around the corners, you know, like trying to get into the shows because the uh, Club Harlem held like 500 people. So if they had a line, it went around the block almost, you know, right. to get in because nobody rushed. You couldn't just go in. Right. There right. was only one entrance. And it's a beautiful visual, too, as well, because we see some of the pictures sometimes. Oh, yeah. And listen, if I had a club, that's where I'd do it. Hey, folks, listen, we're going to take care of you. Right. We're going to feed you, get you a drink, get some great music. Mm -hmm. But you got to stand outside. But it's beautiful, though. Right. That's right. amazing. Yeah. The history of Atlantic City music is unprecedented. I mean, there's only a few places you could go to see some of it. I think right. Boardwalk Hall with the Atlantic City experience. Mm -hmm. But what you're doing, my friend, is keeping it alive. I mean, I'm you're out the there. I'm doing the best I can. I'm right. doing the best I can. Well, Kelsey's has embraced on Kentucky Avenue, and I call it uh, KY in the curb south side because his no, his north side is gone. Right. You know, uh, the club home and all that was on the north side. So anyway, Kelsey's, we play second Fridays, and we're moving into a new spot. The Rhythm and Spirits right. on uh, the Orange Loop with yep. uh, Mark Colazzo's uh, spot. And we're going to be there on the first Fridays. So you can come on down and check us out. Eddie Morgan Trio, we, me and Daryl Robinson and Jeff Burnside. Uh, we'll do our best to put a smile on your face and play some good music for you. Hey, so Eddie, thank you so much for being our guest today. Love you. You'll definitely be back. My Folks, pleasure. listen, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey folks, it's our belief here at the Mike Lopez TV show that you, the viewers and our guests, bring the show to life. Thanks to each and every one of you for joining us. To learn more about AC Mike, go to acmikenj.com on Facebook, AC Mike, Mike Lopez, and Live Work Play AC. You can catch me on Instagram at acmikenj. If you enjoyed watching today's show, you can also listen to my radio show on WOND Radio, 1400 AM. 92.3 FM, WONDRadio.com, Monday through Friday from noon to 2 p.m. Remember to live, work, play AC, and I'll see you on the 48th.